Hello. I pray that you are well today. Why do you believe? No, really. Why do you believe? Not because someone told you to believe, but because you, God has given you the gift of faith. But you have a personal story, a personal narrative in that regard. Consider this. Yesterday we were looking at the Samaritan woman. She said this. Come and see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could this be the Messiah? They came out of town and made their way toward him. Meanwhile, the disciples urged him, Rabbi, eat something. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. The disciples said to each other, could have someone brought him food? My food, said Jesus, is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Don't you have a saying, it is still four months until harvest? I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. Even now, the one who reaps draws a wage and harvests a crop for eternal life. So the sower and the reaper may be glad together. Thus the saying, the one who sows and another reaps is true. I sent you to reap what you have not worked for. Others have done the hard work and you've reaped the benefits of their labor. What exactly is he talking about? This is not the reaping and sowing of fields and seeds but it is the reaping and sowing spiritually of a harvest. Verse 39 gives the example. Many of the Samaritans from the town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. That's a reaping and sowing. He told me everything I ever did. That was her phrase. So when the Samaritans came to him, they urged him to stay with them. He stayed two days. Because of his words, many more became believers. And they said to the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said. Now we have heard for ourselves and we know that this man really is the savior of the world. Why do you believe? Do you know why I believe? Because God blessed me to be born into a home where my parents sacrificed that my brothers and I could go to Christian schools and Christian teachers diligently and faithfully and patiently and lovingly taught me the faith. And for that, I am eternally grateful. I'm eternally grateful for people like Robert Burke, Mr. Robert Burke, who was my teacher in seventh grade. I'm grateful to Roger Riggs, who was my teacher at Milwaukee Lutheran. I'm grateful for so many other teachers who taught me the faith who spoke to me the word. And why do I believe? I've seen God act. I've seen God intervene. I've seen God answer prayer. I've seen God hear my prayer, answer my prayer, and intervene in my life and other people's lives. The scripture uses this language. He says, look, I tell you, open your eyes and look at the fields. They are ripe for harvest. God has planted each of us in a set of relationships, in a place, around people. He is asking us to open our eyes and see the harvest. There is a harvest, a spiritual harvest, even in the midst of this unusually difficult time where there is so much strain and stress. The harvest is that of hope that God knows, that God knows even at the Samaritan woman, everything she ever has done, God knows everything you've ever done and everything I've ever done and everything that will happen. And you can trust and you can believe this truth. And you can trust and you can believe that he is with you. Open your eyes to the harvest. Open your eyes to the life that God has given you. May you see your eyes, may you see your life with spiritual eyes. May I see my life with spiritual eyes. Open our eyes. May we see what God wants us to see. May we see the opportunities around us to speak his word, to encourage others. May we see things in the light of eternity. I want to encourage you to continue to pray. We give thanks to God that Fran is getting out of the hospital. God bless her. We ask God's grace and God's peace and God's strength, especially we pray today in behalf of the Ermeline family. As Kathy Ermeline, who had taken a fall about eight days ago, has now gone home to be with the Lord. 
our heart goes out to Pastor Vern and his family. Our heart breaks for them. We are thankful for the confidence of eternal life, but we are sad for them. We weep with those who weep. We ask that you would pray with us now. Lord God, we come before you for the Ermelines. We pray that you would grant them your strength in this, in this time of the need of comfort. Bless us that we would look at our lives and other people's lives in view of the harvest, a harvest of faith. And we thank you that Kathy has received the outcome of her faith, the salvation of her soul. But we pray for Pastor Vern and for the children and grandchildren that they may have comfort. In Christ's name, amen. God bless you today.